<laughs> What's up, guys? Oh. Thanks for tuning in, Angela. <laughs> And just like a bad little kid over there. Oh, we're starting. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in to For the Girls, brought to you by Relationship Restored. Today, we're talking about finding and building intentional friendships. Yay. We get this question a lot, I feel like, because at Isn't our age, yeah, it's rare, <laughs> like, you know, to have that many great friends. And so people are always asking the question, how did you find your friends and all that good stuff. So a lot of you have been asking for this and here it is. Where do we start? Well, we should talk Brie, about how you were we, the curator of this. I, I say, definitely. We should talk about how we met. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I think that is like a great example. So you two met first. Yes. Yep. So you guys go first. Wait, did we meet first? Yes. I mean, out of us three. Yeah. You two met first. And then I met you. Well, I met you, but. I, I think you and I might have met before me and Cece met. We just oh. weren't, yeah, oh. we just weren't really close until, oh. well, so yeah, we're a little messed up on the timeline. Yeah, we're going to we get it together, y'all. Um, but I met Sean. This is actually a funny story. This is a true story. We were in the pool, me and a friend, and she sees Sean and she's like, oh, <laughs> well, he's a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> um, and Lord. he had a little boy with him and I love kids. So like, I was like, oh my God. She's like, oh, you're so cute. And, you know, we were just like being playful neighbors. We were at a at an apartment building. And I don't even know how the conversation started. I think I was talking about Amaris because I could tell my friend thought Sean was attractive. We didn't know he was married yet. Um, then we saw, oh, okay, he's married. And he mentioned, he's like, oh, yeah, me and my wife. And <laughs> so um, I met Sean first and we talked business. And then he introduced me to Angela. Mm -hmm. And that's how we first met. Yes. Cece and I, we first met at a dance class. Oh, and, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I was Bible study. No, no, no I don't no. just invite anybody to my Bible study. Okay. No, no, no. She no, had no. to be sorry, vetted sorry, first. Sorry, and sorry. also, I don't know if I'm going to just in my Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Cece's like, yeah, this sounds, this sounds like, good. I, I love Jesus in my time. Um, <laughs> no, so so Brie was hosting a shameless uh, dance class. Yeah. Okay. And then one of our girlfriends, Tanil. Tanil, okay. Um, I know the story. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 Brie knew Tanil because they had she because Tanil was a client of hers. Yeah. And then I knew Tanil because Tanil was a friend of mine that I met through business. Um, Accountant. I know. Tenille. Yes. It was just. It was a lot of. Anyway. So Tanil invited me. She was like, "Oh my gosh, I met these girls. They're around your age. They're super cool. Seems like you would connect with them." Um, one of them's hosting a dance class, and I think a lot of them are going to be there. You should come. And, like, I'm never going to turn down a good time. Yeah. So I was like, Y'all, okay. Cece walks in, hair <laughs> curly, volume popping, this green fur, and, like, this Stop. big coat. So she, like, walks in, and I was like, oh, <laughs> Yes. yes i was like this fur and i'm like touching her hair and the fur and i'm like this is cute and i'm like i didn't, oh, I didn't know who she was i didn't, I didn't know, know it was her, her teacher no i didn't know it was her dance class i was until just like, i was up there yeah. and then she's like oh, like, oh shit. <laughs> that's her. um so like immediately she was like my soul sister and i was like i loved that girl so what happened was um i moved here from cleveland so i was living here at the time almost two years it was like a year and a half to two years and I hadn't had like a real group of friends I met a few people around you stole and, Dre's friends mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. yeah so Mel and Mimi mm -hmm. were my friends but they were through Dre and I was like I want friends of my own like I want friends that I hand selected for this new journey of my life because I moved from a different city I had friends there that weren't great for me like a lot of my friendships ended immediately and was one of the reasons why I wanted to move some of the friendships we just weren't as close so I really didn't have like a solid friend except for my friend Tori who lives in Columbus, hey, Ohio. Tori. Hey Tori. Hey Tori girl. <laughs> um, so, you know, I told Dre, I was like, I'm thinking of having a brunch and just inviting a like girls. the girls that I feel I genuinely really like and want to get to know more and like seeing if they all like each other because like mm -hmm. how cool would it be if like we became like a little friend group. Yeah. And I felt real like petty for saying that at my age, but I'm like, why the heck not? Like when you're in high school, when you're in college, like you specifically find friends have similar interests and that you can have a good time with. And I'm like, why should it be any different yeah. at 25 years old? Right. Yeah. So um, when I had everyone come to uh, to the brunch, first of all, Cece pulled 
up with a fur with Chick Fil A I mean, chicken. No, she talks about this like like I pulled because out one like you have like to diamonds. understand. You have to understand. I never had Chick Fil A. Period. Yeah, oh. that was my first time having Wait, it. That was her you first time having Chick Fil A. Yes. Cherry, no wonder. Wow. So, this is the thing I always wow. heard how good it was, and we ha- we did like the chicken and waffle situation, yeah. and I've had chicken and waffles before, but this chicken. <laughs> Oh my, it was just so good. And I chicken. kept looking at Cece because I knew like, it's not cheap. It was a big box. And I'm like, that's generous. It was like, maybe like $80. Yeah, like, but still, that's a lot to bring to brunch to a bunch it's of chicks you don't chicken. know. It that's was some like, quality chicken. Look, yeah. I was and like, I like oil. this girl and I want to keep her around because if this is what she does, that would have stolen my heart too. No bullshit. I was very, I was like, I like her. I thought food, I liked her before. Food. I love her now. Yeah. <laughs> so when we were at the, the brunch, we... I like had a little game. We like played a little mm-hmm. card game. We kind of went, went around the table and talked about like who we have as like friends. Like if you have like close friends and like what you're looking for in friends. Like it was just like a cute little it like, was like, it a, was cute. like yeah. a date, like a yeah. like yeah. dating for friends. Yeah, yeah. But what we found out is that a lot of people have like a bunch of mutual friends and just like people, but no one really had like intentional friends. One of the things that was major for me that I wanted to do was have friends that I could fellowship with and like grow in Christ with and not in a traditional let's go to, to church on Sunday type of way, but in like a once a month let's get together and fellowship in a way where yes god is is a part of the conversation but it's more about us checking in with ourselves and our lives and as women making sure we're supporting each other as friends and now that i'm even talking about i'm like we've been saying like we need to get that back on the schedule Mm -hmm. because it was it was just there's something different about fellowshipping like that versus just going out for drinks or grabbing dinner Absolutely. or whatever and and what's cool about it is that like this is not just like a like maybe three or four girls this is like it was nine of us nine of us nine women who had their own lives and everyone and, was in their own lane like everyone yeah. had specific careers we or were businesses all doing separate that were things. totally different yeah and and this this brunch really connected us all in a way that we're all still really good friends today now Mm -hmm. now of course some of us are are a little bit closer than than some of the others yeah but we're all still good friends and and we've since expanded that that group (laughs) went from nine to 13 (laughs) like 13 or 14 yeah um 14 uh, 14 counting angela yeah (laughs) so um so that's that's actually really dope and and what was cool is that these bible studies that we started we took them really seriously like we we got we had um books like journals like uh, bible study journals that we all read through and had assignments that we had to do prior to going to bible Bible study, like a different person hosted Bible study each time. We all had like potlucks, so like all the girls would like bring something. It was it was very very intentional. It was really cool, especially for like girls um, as young as we were at that time. We were all still in our twenties. Everyone was single, but me. everyone was single but Brie. <laughs> <laughs> and now look, we're going to Rachel's wedding in uh, December. December. You're married. Callie's booed all the way way up up. to Neil's married. Devin's booed up. Like everybody has just flourished. And it's so cool because we've all been a part of like that growth. Like there's really not one person that we like aren't still in contact with. Not at all. So it's really cool. Everyone's still super tight. So so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's dope. But also in that there we i'd be remiss if i didn't say that there weren't challenges mm-hmm. amongst the friends yeah because we're grown and we different grown. everyone's and, and very all, different everybody has different we're personalities all women and we all know that 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 as women sometimes we can get a little emotional and, and emotions mm-hmm. get high and yeah. and and so i think that you know as we're talking about friendships and intentionality we have to talk about how do you work through those difficult times with a friend that you may not be seen eye to eye with yeah. especially when you have so many friends that you're like do i even need this you know right, it's different right. when you have one best one friend best you're best gonna friend. work it out but like you have like 20 because not only do we have our like tight circle of friends but you also have our own individual yeah. friends yeah. so like collectively like each of us probably have like 22 tight friends yeah. you know yeah i, I mean i think and Sean and I have talked a lot about this too because Sean's an introvert. Mm-hmm. Um, he keeps it tight. He keeps it simple. <laughs> I'm, fr- I'm his best friend, and then he has some some guys he hangs out with and talks to. Um, but we've talked a lot about this as you evolve, your friendships might change, mm-hmm. and um, I think 
that's what happened to me and him. Um, I, especially after I had Alina, like we really like kind of sat back was like, dang, such and such hasn't met our kid. <laughs> like, Damn. or haven't even tried to meet our kid mm -hmm. or sent us a diaper or a card or, hey, how's the kid? Like, like when we sat back, we were like, oh, shit. Like, this person came to our wedding and not that it's a big deal, didn't even give us a card, you know, came to the baby shower, didn't give us a gift, you know, like the whole purpose of a baby shower is to shower. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we had a baby and like this person hasn't come to see the baby. And it's not just like friends, it's family too. So when we sat down and did that like checklist, we were like, okay, like now we know who's like, intentional like who who's intentional with us and who we need to be intentional with and i think even i think friendships are just important as your relationship with your man yeah. or mm -hmm. your woman mm -hmm. you have to really sit down and take stock of mm -hmm. the effort and that's what we did we took stock of the effort of the people who were intentional with us somewhere in there i had a baby i had postpartum um, that's how Brie and I fell off mm -hmm. because I didn't want to talk to anybody. She mm -hmm. disappeared. I was I like, Sean, is she alive? <laughs> I can disappeared. Can I come in and see her? Yeah. I, I can totally understand that. <laughs> and then yeah. after Alina was, after COVID and stuff, like I think the fog started to come up a bit. I don't know at what point did it switch, but we reconnected with Brie and started hanging out with her a few times, her and Dre. And then we were like, hey, it's really fucking dope to be with another married couple mm -hmm. who have not necessarily the same goals, but the same vision of life, mm -hmm. a successful marriage, um, successful in your career, businesses, um, successful at parenting and really building a village. So we kind of like clung on to them. We, we really liked them a lot. And mm -hmm. we were like, okay, not necessarily they're gonna be our best friends, but as it kept going, I was like, okay, she's going to be my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Sean was like, I really fuck with Dre. Like, <laughs> I've never met nobody who's as chill as me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so then after that, Brie introduced me to TC. <laughs> so Brie had You a had cookout. just had a baby. I had literally just I was so her out. impressed. I was like, just this her chick out. is here. <laughs> yeah, just popped her out. Remember, I, like, I had postpartum. Yeah. I didn't come out the house. Yeah. I was like, yo, that's impressive as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I needed to get out the house. Cause, cause so so I know myself. I am an I am an extrovert's extrovert. And so I get fueled by people social. and yeah so so I, when i'm in the house too much i actually get moody and cranky mm. and then if it, and then like if i stay in the house too long it's not a good situation it isn't until That's i actually what happened to me i actually get I out that, that i start to blossom yeah. and so it was really dope when, when <laughs> i when i met angela at your cookout um you know, I had just had Capri and I think I was talking to someone and then you came to me and you were like, oh my gosh, I just overheard that you just had a baby. And I was like, yeah. And you're like, I have a baby too. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'm the first one of my group of friends right, to have, yeah. a, uh, to have yeah. a child. So, um, so to meet someone else that was also another young, cute popping mom. <laughs> and I was like, hi. <laughs> How you do it? make it happen. Like, girl, breastfeeding is so hard. That's and that's what we talked about. We talked about breastfeeding because yeah. you were doing it. Yeah, girl. And you were like, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. And I'm like, girl, I didn't make it very long. I please that don't let it press because that's something I learned. I was so pressured into breastfeeding for a year. That's what your kid yeah. needs. They need a year of yeah. your boob milk, and like, like that's four months. It started to trickle down, and I just felt like a horrible mother. And they, they don't talk about this. They don't. So, I mean, we, this is a, a conversation for another time. Yeah. But, but I, but, but we, we, we connected about, it, yeah. about that, and I felt good to be able to talk to someone who understood me. Yeah. Not saying that my friends don't understand me, but also in that I, I was now entering into a different space that they can't yeah. relate to. Yeah. Right. So, so that was. It was a transition for me, and I've have since met other moms. That so now I have my yeah. own mom tribe. Yeah, yeah. 
mm-hmm. um, in addition to my my good group of girlfriends. Right. But it's funny, when my mom tribe has asked me, because they're a little bit older than me. Mm-hmm. Um, so like most of them are like uh, 37 and I'm 31 um, right now. And so, um, and at that time I was 30. So, so a lot of them had asked me like, so how is your relationship with your friends now that you're married with a kid, right? So, because if you remember, Brie was the only one who was in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, shortly after it was me, and then I fucking got pregnant, and then I had a kid, and now I'm the only one with a kid, right? So, (laughs) So it's like... So they were like asking me how my dynamic with my friends has changed yeah. since all of that. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I mean, it definitely has changed um, in the sense that I'm not able to hang out with them yeah. um, as much anymore. You know, I don't necessarily get invited to certain things yeah. because because some of the things that some of the my single friends are going to is not appropriate for right. for a, a married mom, mom yeah. to be going to um but i don't feel any type of way about it yeah. because i i recognize that i am now in a different space yeah. and it, it doesn't make us any less friends it just means that that we're navigating two different roads right. and i have no doubt that a lot of my friends are going to be joining me on my that road, road pretty, very pretty soon, soon. Mm-hmm. the so, way they're moving you know so <laughs> so so and i know that that they're going to look to me like cc how how do i do this how do i do this yeah. like did you struggle with this you know and i'll be yeah. able to have the insight but right. but you know i i think it was a, maybe a little bit difficult for me because i'm a very fun extroverted person i in the beginning when i when i was very early postpartum um, I also struggled a little bit from postpartum depression. Yeah. Um, and I had a lot of FOMO. You yeah. know, I, all of my beautiful, fun friends are still beautiful and skinny and fun and out, out here having a great time. Your and boobs I'm, are I'm, leaking. My boobs are leaking. They're sagging like yeah. in a way that they weren't before. I'm Don't fat. feel sexy. I don't feel sexy. I have this baby on yeah. me constantly that's crying. Um, you know, and like they would check in on me but none of them really could understand yeah, right. what I was going through. Right. Um, That's why I was so excited for you to meet Angela because yeah. I like I know like you don't have to be a mom to know when your mom friend yeah. needs a mom friend. Yeah. Like yeah. I felt so bad. So I'm like, there's so many things I can't contribute to help you yeah. or support you in a way because I just literally cannot. Yeah. So I was so, so excited. So Bree being intentional, me. set up dinners for yes. us. Yes, we had <laughs> several dinners. And that's what I was like, okay. <laughs> She's going to be my bestie too. <laughs> and I remember when you did the couples game night where mm-hmm. a lot of other couples come and I came and I met Shane for the first time. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're Angela. And then he turned yes, to- Yes, I, I was talking about you so much. I was like, oh my God, I met Angela. I love her so much. She's so nice and kind and beautiful. <laughs> Shane, he like literally turned to Sean and like imitated. Like, oh my God, I met Angela. We're going to be besties. Okay, <laughs> I love Shane's imprint. Like it, when he does CC, it's like it's pretty good. He yeah. needs a, a so grammy. no, that was really cool when I met Shane because now I've heard about Shane several times at this point. We um, how we take we had taken the girls to the farm, I think, mm-hmm. and so it was really cool to finally meet Shane. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you have Capri's face, yeah, <laughs> like mm-hmm. you are. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they are twinsies. <laughs> you are Shane. So then it was really cool to see finally the dynamic and then like our husbands kind of like yeah. talking shit about us. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and it's also dope. Not not even just on the mom level. Yeah. But, you know, I have to applaud um, Brie for bringing a lot of yeah. a lot of couples together because I also think that and this is, you know, I love my my single friends, but I. Um, when you are in a serious relationship, when you're engaged and when you're married, it's there's nothing like having another couple friend mm-hmm. that you That's can hang out with because they can relate to you. You guys are on the same path. You guys can can kind of have a safe space to navigate issues with. That's what yeah. it feels you know? like. So yeah. so and then and also for for me and now I have 
bonus brothers mm-hmm. like that that I can also like right. when I'm tired of talking to my man I'm like whoo so Sean what's going on with you <laughs> you know so so that's yeah. that's a beautiful thing yeah. as well yeah. and 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 in talking or about you need someone to help you move your stuff okay oh my god Angela is always volunteering Sean for but the thing is Sean was ready until help. Shane he was like we're we gonna hire people. he's Hercules you can't have I mean, a husband that looks like, like that, Sean and not, and not offer him to move yeah, stuff yeah not come to work it's like you need you need body you need muscle you, you need know. yeah that's what I'm I got saying. you like it's so just, I, I do want to talk about know, this I, I got y'all with if y'all need any dentistry stuff oh like, we all we all my, have my, all my the man face. has done root canals on a few of my friends <laughs> <so>. <laughs> great reviews raving reviews <laughs> um no so I did want to mention this really quickly because um since the episode is about like finding and building intentional friends I want to talk about finding because Every single one of the girls that I brought to that brunch that day and or even just anyone that I'm friends with today, I met them all very differently. And I always tell people there's no answer. Like we can't tell you a specific thing to do that's going to make you meet yeah, the right friend. Girl, yeah. But I just want to give you guys some scenarios and how I met different people so that maybe it can spark an idea in your brain of what you maybe can do to meet someone. So first dance class, like anything where all women are getting together is great. Devin, when she came to the class, we were just going around in the circle and everyone introduced themselves. And she specifically said, yeah, I'm just here because I don't have any friends and I'm hoping I can meet some. (laughs) And literally (laughs) after the class, I pulled her to the side and I was like, I'll be your friend. Like, and I was like, you seem super cool. And I was like, here, take my number. And she was one of those girls that was at the brunch. So um, sometimes it's great to just be vulnerable. And if you're looking for something, say it out loud, because chances are there's someone in the room that can hear you or is watching you that also wants the same thing. And we'll just reach out so dance class um social media one me and callie slid in each other's dms Uh, one of the other girls mm, (laughs) i was like girl you be working out i said i want some abs like you and she was like you're so cute and she's like where do you live and i was like i just moved dc she was like i live in dc and i was like well i need to come to your gym and she was like you come to my apartment i was like whoa what are we gonna do and she was like i'll cook for us and and you can bring some wine i was like well sounds like a good time (laughs) and literally i didn't know this person i showed up at their apartment and luckily i wasn't murdered she was great (laughs) um but then i met a good friend through her she was like you have to meet my friend you guys both dance professionally like let me introduce you boom Um, One of the other ways, Tennille was a client of mine and I just fell in love with working with her as a person that I was like, we should hang out outside of this. Like every single situation was totally different and totally organic. I was never out here like seeking and searching for friends to the point where I was like doing the most same as when you're single and you want love. You don't stand on the corner with a sign that says, I want love. Will you Does date me? Anybody want to be with me? But you do intentional things like go to specific places, network, talk to people. You never know who you're talking to. You might not be talking to your friend, but you might be talking to someone who might introduce yeah. you to your friend. Um, but I think it's important to be vulnerable and to just tell people what you're looking for Mm -hmm. because most times if someone hears that you're looking for a friend then they might say maybe we should do dinner or something like that but also the bible study thing now to cc's point it's weird if you don't know people to just like go and attend a Bible study, right. like to find friends. But there's so many different like things on um, Meetup and Eventbrite that are women based events where if you just go to these events, you might meet someone and be able to do something similar like that on like a one on one type of situation. But also social media, y'all don't be afraid to slide in these girls' these DMs. Girls DMs. A lot of these girls are very nice. Yeah. yeah. And what's the worst thing you're going to say? Either like, nothing or like, uh, no, I'm sorry, I just don't have time. Like, yeah. just, you know, saying like, like, hey, like from looking at your page, I really love like your vibes and energy. I just moved to the area and I'm hoping that you might want to grab lunch or something. And then specifically something that I've learned, whether it's networking or like from a friend space, is if you offer to like treat someone, they almost always say yes. Yeah. So if you're like, oh my gosh, like I would love to get together, like totally my treat if you want to like grab drinks one day, people are more enticed, but like, well, shit, okay, yeah. And then it could go great and yeah. you can have a new friend, but just don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like taking that like next step, like yeah. obviously we met in our different ways, but what was there and was common, even with what you were saying, going through all the, the moments where you met the different friends, is you can feel a vibe. You can feel an energy. I loved your (laughs) vibe. This girl just had a baby out here smiling. And and I I had like a little... 
thing of wine, a little, like a little bottle of wine. Yeah. Was it was like, it was like a like a bedazzled, bedazzled, bedazzled like bottle, like water bottle that was like filled with red wine. And I was like, I was first like time I wine. this, that's a vibe. And then <laughs> Brie, when you did you, my husband was your client again for yeah. that second time. So we met the first time, and then I got pregnant like three weeks later after I met and went into like this weird depression all through pregnancy and then after pregnancy. And then when we decide to make over Sean's Instagram, my first thought was like, we have to go back to Brie. Like that's who we know. Like there's no other choices. Mm -hmm. So then we hit Brie up and then like after she took all the pictures and all that stuff, she's like, Oh my gosh, Sean, can me and Angela have a girl's night? And Sean was like, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and we did. And after that, I think I was at your house till like 2 a.m. You got me drunk. Yeah. Yep. I was yeah, going to say, he was, he, Bree, he Bree, loved the girls Bree, night. Yeah, he did. Good for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, so we I'm just fun. saying, if you feel the vibe, it's there. We're not saying like force it. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. we're going to be friends. But if you feel the vibe and it's there, be intentional about it. And I'm going to give a, an example. You, we met maybe after like a few weeks or like a few months after you sent me a text to check on me <laughs> and i was like oh yeah those 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 gestures matter a lot because yeah. it shows someone's intentionality yeah so now like i always make it a point like i'm hella busy i'm running all the time working i'm a teacher i have a business and i have a kid and a husband but just taking the time like i always try to check out check on y'all like yeah. i always do i always try to check mm. on the people who aren't that are my other friends who mm -hmm. like Alina's god mommy she's always there for us like I'm always gonna check on her mm -hmm. like she's single but I'm intentional with her because mm -hmm. the vibe and the intentionality back like there has mm -hmm. to be effort now if you're always reaching out to someone and they're not receptive yeah like, ah. it, it kind of goes to that relationship thing yeah, like, yeah. take a hint take a hint <laughs> you know but yeah. if you feel so, that the vibe is there you have the common interest mm -hmm. why Make not just be like how you doing how you been like and like it really grows after that yeah so so one thing since we're talking about building um I had a situation with one of our friends in the friend group where like my expectations of her, like sh she just wasn't meeting them and made me feel like I'm such a good friend to you, but you did these things that didn't make you a good friend to me. And I immediately was trying to like jump ship and was like blowing up the spot over something that could have just been a conversation. And a lot of you might know if you follow me on Instagram from my like recent posts where I talked about this year, I worked really, really hard to care less like to and when I say care less I mean like not get so bothered over every little things. thing not yeah. overthinking not nitpicking and allowing people to be who they are meet them where they are love them for who they are yes encourage them to be better and all of those things and communicate expectations and things of that nature but give grace and before jumping ship like really evaluate are you being a good person in that moment and are you treating this person how you would want to be treated right. as a friend? And yeah. if the if it's not the same, like in the moment, I felt like I did ask myself those questions and I was like, I don't like how I'm being treated, but all I had to do is have a conversation. And what I learned as a adult is, you know, losing good friends over stupid stuff at this point in my life is just not worth it. Yeah. Um, especially when all of your friends are mutual it's like why would you want to have yes. a bad or negative energy and and it took a lot out of me to be like okay i'm need, i need to be a bigger person and as soon as you have the conversation this is the thing what makes a friend a friend is that they care about you yeah so sometimes you're just not seeing eye to eye and it just takes a simple conversation so when it comes to building your friendship i think it's very important at the beginning of the relationship to talk about expectations mm -hmm. just the same as you would if you were dating someone mm -hmm. this is something that i love that we did we created group rules at the very beginning which sounds kind of crazy i know but, but it was so but helpful so intentional. Intentional. it was very, it's helpful, very this intentional is why, this is why imagine or just ask yourself how many times have you lost a friend to something silly like they didn't pay you back when you right. lend them money or yeah. they borrowed clothes from you and then like never brought them I back think or, of a few yeah i mean like, it's, it's always, usually it petty money. things yeah, but my thing money. is a lot of times um we're quick to end friendships over silly stuff, mm -hmm. but relationships, a we'll lot of people are not quick to Nothing, end them yeah, it's good, it's good point. over big 
thing. Yeah. yeah. And I get point. that they're two different levels of relationships. Yeah. Right? It's two different types of love. But that's unfair. Yeah. Because, you know, if the person isn't showing the effort, just like in a relationship, red flag. Yeah. You know, yes, that's a relate, that's a friendship that should be in it. But there, if there's an effort there, but there's a disagreement, you're not seeing eye to eye, you need to take the work and you need to talk to this person. Especially because it's so much harder to find it, like to start over. Yeah. Like if you have quality friends, like friends that you know care about you, if it's something that can be talked about, just talk about yeah. it. Like it's just not, it's not that deep. It's not worth all of the negativity and all the back and forth and all the phone calls, and all text messages. It's mm-hmm. drama. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we care too much. And that's been something that I was working on. And I think when it comes to your friendships, you have to pick and choose the things that you're going to let get you out your funk. Like, what are you going to choose to care about? It's also important to be accountable too. Like, if you're going to be accountable with your man or whoever, you should be accountable with your friends. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, yeah, I wrote you off because of this. That was one of our rules. Yeah, hold each other accountable. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's, it's hard to be open honest and vulnerable with a friend yeah and I, I think some because well, you're not having sex with them yeah so, <laughs> so. But, but i think it's very necessary like when you so like i also have high expectations of my friends right so when i see something that i feel like they could be doing better or or, or where they might be harming themselves in in some some way maybe like down the line I think as a friend, I should be I should be able to and I should let you know, like, ha- like have a private conversation. Hey, girl, I love you. And I'm saying this with love, but I've noticed X, Y, Z. Yeah. You know, I I'm only bringing this to your attention because I love you and I because I know that you could be doing better yeah. or I didn't. That's agree, a good friend. I, I didn't agree with this yeah. or you said this the other day and it, and it I it didn't make me feel good it, yeah. or I don't agree with, with how you yeah. perceive that or whatever the case might, might be. Yeah. You should be able to have those types of conversations, not only with your spouse, but with your friends, friends. Yeah. Yeah. with your friends, because at the end of the day, we are grown ass women at this point. Yeah. So we can't have hard conversations with each other and, and, and the other person not take it like, Oh, this bitch, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, then maybe that's that's not truly your your friend. Yeah. But I can honestly say that with my friends, we can have hard conversations with each other. We yeah. can we can fight like sisters and then make up mm-hmm. because we love each other that much. And mm-hmm. it has happened in our friend group where mm-hmm. where 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 a number of us have fought w- with each other. Yeah. And and you know, in the next day or the next few weeks or the next few months, we have made up. Yeah. You know, like we all really make an effort not to talk about each other behind our back Mm -hmm. like i I don't tolerate that shit like when when some of my friends may not be getting along they know not not to come to me talking about the other one because i'm not i'm not gonna be in the middle of this shit as a matter of fact y'all two need to talk yeah and if Mm -hmm. y'all want i can be in the room while y'all two are talking but Mm -hmm. like we're not playing that we are too grown we love each other we need to communicate with each other and work through this yeah Yeah. especially i mean you've invested time with a person exactly you've invested money we don't buy drinks together you know what i'm saying we don't buy outfits together you you know time. my you done played with my baby you know my family right like i like you we done got to our trips together you know what I'm like, like like we we in this too deep yeah you know like, like, like just, you you yeah. know some of my secrets and and, and, and as do <laughs> i with yours so I, so it's like i i and i value my friendships like i really do like my my friends i don't have a, a sister i only have a, a an older brother, brother yeah. and so my girlfriends and i like again, I'm a girl's girl because I we talked about this. You, you know, don't like men. Don't really care for men. So so I'm I'm a girl's girl, right? So so my girlfriends are like my sisters, and I have a an individual relationship with each of my friends. Mm-hmm. So I really cherish their 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 that my relationships with them. And I think mm-hmm. that's the next level to intentionality. Yeah, is making that effort being accountable with your friend, not just your husband, your bae or whoever, and cherishing that. Cause mm-hmm. you it's it's way easier for us to cherish a relationship where there's love and you know you're getting married to this person. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But I think it's even harder to put effort and cherish the relationship Absolutely with your friend. Agree. I and I that. feel like if you can do both, 
then, you know, your your life can be more full. You know, you're not just always depending on on the man. So I so real, real quick, I have a girlfriend, a really good girlfriend who doesn't have a lot of girl a, a lot of her own girlfriends. Mm-hmm. And um her previous boyfriend, uh her her baby's father actually, um felt that she was always under him. Mm. And she had actually moved out of state to go live in his state uh, where where she didn't know anybody. She literally lived up there for a few years, made no friends. Mm. So she she was always under him because that was all she knew. And that actually made their relationship that wasn't the put only thing, on but it was one of the things that, yeah. made, that put a strain on, on their relationship. So, like, I, I, you know, I hear sometimes a lot of women saying that they don't have any girlfriends. I've heard that. Yeah. And, and it causes a little bit of concern on my end for that woman because I think that it's necessary to have. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying have 22 girlfriends like, like, like we have, but, like. I mean, at least have one, two, three that you really are close with and you yeah. and you put the effort into making them your sister. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's also not healthy for you to always be underneath right. your man. Or yeah. even I have family members who they don't got no man and ain't got no friends. And I'm like, what is going on? Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is happening? Yeah. I mean, that's- Who do you talk that's, to? That's lonely. Yeah. You know? Super and, introverted. <laughs> that's like another level of introverted. I mean, it's another level of introvert. Or just, they're just lonely, yeah. you know? And, and then that can also cause issues where, you know, <laughs> down, down the line. So- Yeah. It's the giggle for me. <laughs> 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 No, I think that was good, though. I think, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, please like comment below or if there's even more specific questions about friendships that you guys want to know, definitely let us know because we wanted our like four pillars of this show one of them to be about friends and mm-hmm. it but it's hard to come up with topics so if there's anything specifically that you guys want to hear please let us know let's cheers to our beautiful friendship Yay! and to all the friendships that will blossom hopefully from the advice you took from this episode <laughs> thanks so much for tuning in guys make sure to follow us at relationship restored like comment and tell us what you want to hear and until next time bye, bye. peace <laughs>